Hey guys! So this video apparently has been long awaited and it's been long overdue. I previously posted a video on how to make your own free spinning removable stripper pole and there were quite a few people that didn't quite understand how I put it together and what exactly was involved in making it. So now that I've moved and my pole was about five years old and needed to be replaced, I figured I would go through the entire process step by step to show you guys exactly how everything goes. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for you to put your own together and maybe I can give you a couple ideas on how to make a stationary one although that's not what I'm going to be making. So, okay, here we go. First thing, I've got this board here which I'm going to be cutting up into squares and that'll be explained later. Um, the squares are going to be fitted to the Lazy Susan. Okay, this is fairly simple, pretty small, six inches, holds up to 500 pounds, which is no big deal at all um, for doing tricks and such. You, you know, obviously, got to use some common sense and be careful. But, um, okay, so we have one Lazy Susan. We have two flanges here, which are available in plumbing. And, um,. There, I got one and a half inch ones. I previously made a pole that was one and a quarter and felt that it was probably a little too thin, so I wanted to go up in size. I have two flanges, one and a half inches. Then I have these little grippers here, which are going to go on the bottom of the piece of wood that's underneath the Lazy Susan, so it'll be on the very base and kind of help keep the grip so that it doesn't slide all over the place when you're using your pole. Um, I've got some screws, obviously. Um, you're going to have to use your own judgment with whatever equipment that you do purchase because the screws are going to have to be, these are going to have to be short enough to be able to fit into these holes but without touching the other side. So you're going to have to find fairly short screws because if the screws go through the board and through the Lazy Susan and touch the other side, you're not going to get any spinning action at all. Um, these I got are a little longer because the flange is going to be sitting on top of a piece of wood, which is going to be between the flange and the Lazy Susan. So these screws should fit just fine between the flange the piece of wood that's attached to the Lazy Susan and not touch the bottom piece of wood that's going to be in there. Um, I'm sure this is kind of confusing right this second, but I promise you it'll all come together. And then I have two of these, which they call adapters. Now, the pole, essentially, right there, that's the pole. I believe it's 10 feet long, which you can cut, uh, which obviously I'm going to have to do. But these adapters give the electrical conduit threads because the conduit is so thin they can't thread it at the store for you. Now they have heavier duty stuff, a heavier duty pole which is also much heavier in weight and um, might not be a good idea to use with the Lazy Susan there because I'm not sure, you know, I don't know your body weight, I don't know what other kind of equipment you're attaching to it, but um, anyway, so these worked perfectly for a $35 pole um, and you can tighten, when you tighten down the screws it basically holds the pole in place and allows you to screw it into the flange. So when you screw down these screws it tightens against the pole and you have a full setup. Now this this thing here, this middle ring is going to be removed. Um, I don't have any use for that. And I got the second one to put on the top to keep the pole steady and um, so that it doesn't slide around and it gives the pole something to hook into. Uh, well, that, I'll show you that later too, obviously. And I've got these bolts here for the flange that will be on the top of the ceiling. So it'll be up here like this at the top of the ceiling and you want to make sure you bolt this into a beam. You've got to bolt it into a beam. If you don't bolt it into a beam, you're going to go sailing across the room, and I know we've all seen those wonderful videos. Um, you might want to take a piece of the board 
and actually cut out a piece of the board to put between the ceiling and the flange because regardless of how heavy you are how light you are you're still gonna have that movement while you swinging around the pole and it's gonna cause this flange here to wobble as you're using it so if you have more of a brace and you have a a weak ceiling a more a wider base across the top is gonna help the or keep damage from keep you from damaging your ceiling <laughs> and it'll be more of a, a safety thing as well um, so I've got Rust-Oleum, Rust Inhibitor. I've never used this stuff before. I'm hoping that it works. The first time that I built the pole, I used just clear lacquer. And um, that gave a, a really, really good grip, and sometimes the grip was too good. So um, use your judgment, whatever you'd prefer to use, but you have to use some kind of a coat for the pole itself because it is aluminum you will get aluminum shavings and to have that in contact with your skin consistently and in tender spots could be a bad thing so um, let's get this started alright so this is the assembly of the bottom part of the pole and as you can see here I have a circle particle board and a square now I saw a comment that somebody made about why not have the bottom be entirely just a circle instead of a square so you don't tear up your feet so I tried to do that and it just didn't work because you have to be able to turn part of the the lazy Susan to the outside so you can screw it through to the other board and I wasn't able to do that because both circles overlapped each other so I'm gonna make the bottom part a square and the top a circle so that my feet don't get torn up so I've already drilled holes for both sides of the flange and how this is going to go is the Lazy Susan is going to get screwed into the square board then the circle is going to be screwed into the top of the Lazy Susan and as you can see I have some extra holes here that I've already drilled in and that's where the flange is going to go okay so I got the bottom part screwed into the Lazy Susan sorry I would have shown you guys but I can't screw and uh, film at the same time <laughs> um, so this piece I'm going to flip over because that's where all my marks are from my ugly marker and uh, screw that into in this way so with the marks that I've made with the drill I'm going to be able to screw it in through here into the top and then we'll get the flange on Okay, so here we have everything screwed in together because, uh, um, like I said, got to use both hands. But um, here we have the square piece that's going to be on the bottom. And as you can see, everything's all screwed in. That's what it looks like from the side. And the edges are rough, which I'll probably go back and sand later and probably paint this so it isn't quite so ugly. And uh, I've got, when I screwed them in, I saw that I've got these little pointy buggers hanging out and I really don't feel like tearing my feet up on those so I'll probably get an extra set of grippers or something to put on top of that to give us some extra cushions because I got screws that were just a teeny bit too long. So here we have my white board is pretty much going to be a brace for the ceiling flange and I've already drilled holes in the board. I've painted it so it doesn't look so god awful against my ceiling and the flange is going to be bolted into this of course all at the same time I'm not going to do it individually but see I've got the holes up there on the ceiling this is going to go up against the ceiling and the flange on top Here I have the bottom piece assembled I've got the adapter screwed into the flange this is the adapter here screwed into the flange which has been bolted to the piece of wood which is right on top of the lazy susan I've also added my grippies so just as a little side note, please, please, please make sure that you have weight on your pole as you're using it. If you don't have weight and you go to push it, this whole bottom piece is going to slide. But if you have weight on it, see as I'm pushing down, it's not going anywhere. And I've bolted in the top flange into the piece of wood and into the ceiling into a beam. Please make sure you bolt it into a beam. 
If you don't bolt it into a beam, you're going to rip your ceiling right out and probably hurt yourself. Not a good idea. Um, I've painted it, so hopefully it won't be as noticeable and there'll just be a chunk of metal hanging out of the ceiling. But um, cut a square out for the ceiling and I've got the round piece for the top, which I'll probably paint later as I said, and the square for the bottom. Hopefully my toes won't catch on it. And uh, now it's time to measure. So what we're going to do is measure. You can see the lip. There's a little lip in here, and that's where your pole is going to sit, right when you screw this in. So when you screw this down, it holds the pole in place. So the pole is going to be from the lip all the way up to the top, and you want to get your tape measure. Measure, measure, measure. Make sure your measurement is right. And you're going to have another one of these nipples up top. Now don't be surprised if when you put your weight on it, the floor sinks a little bit or there's some kind of a give. So give it an extra, uh, use your judgment, quarter inch, half inch, um, and make sure the pole stays in the top because this, this is going to be up here and your pole is going to go into there. So you want to make sure there's a little bit of play. That's assuming that this is the top one though, however, this is the bottom. This is going to be screwed down tight. You're going to measure from that little lip inside all the way up to the ceiling. Make sure you measure probably about a half inch shorter than from here to the ceiling because you want to be able to get it out of there. You don't want it to be flush with that flange. If it's flush with it, then you might as well have made a permanent one. Here is the finished pole. As you can see, I put the adapter into the flange and I coated the pole with a kind of a rust inhibitor something or another but uh, you gotta you gotta put something on it whether it's paint or some kind of rust inhibitor just to make sure you don't get the the little flakes of aluminum in in your skin that's not good that can be a serious irritant but I cut it put it all together and I had to put a bath mat underneath it because my floor just wasn't holding with the grippers that I put on the bottom but I was in a little bit of a hurry to get this video up for you guys I know you guys wanted more detailed instructions so here they are but as far as the bath mat goes you'll find that as you build your pole you're probably gonna need a few adjustments here and there but uh, so this is it. I hope it helps you guys and I would love to see videos of you using your poles that you've made using this tutorial. And I wish you luck. Please remember to use common sense. Common sense. If it starts to slip, don't do it. Thanks guys.